What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode, it's episode number 16, what a bottle job Doxy, yeah coming on the back of our community shield lost to Man City where we were leading into the final second, final kick of the game, blew it and then lost on penalties. I was feeling like Pep Guardiola and it's just Community Shield in real life. Arsenal did that to them. They gave us a taste of that medicine. Uh, today, there's loads to get through, man. We've got 35 mil in the budget. We've got three weeks to go to the window slam. Shall we play our first Premier League games, including Coventry City away at the Rico, back in the big time. And we'll have the draw for the Open League group stage as well around here or here. So, tons to get through. Let's get straight to it. Right, first game today and first game of the season. Uh, Brighton at home in a South Coast derby as we aim to put our Charity Shield choke to the back of our Minds and start off a battle victory here against one of our rivals. Brighton in Bournemouth for our first game of the season. Come on, you cherries. Oh, penned right now. Absolutely penned. Can't get out. Good block. And now we shall. Still deadlocked at 0-0. 36 minutes in. Haven't had a chance yet. It might fall here on the break. Gold opportunity as well. Scott. Oh, what a ball. And I've given him the old man for this season. Whether he wears it permanently or not, I guess we'll see. But leading by example as a skipper should, Solanke with our opener. He and Scott signing those new extensions. They are integral to our chances of hitting our objectives this season. Reaching the semi-finals of the FA Cup that we won last year. Finishing in fifth in the Premier League. Qualifying for the Europa League again. And reaching the Europa League final as well. If Solanke goes down, we are literally screwed. I guess you could say that's one of the reasons why he decided to sign that contract extension. I didn't just say you're going to get a massive new salary, but also as Lewis Dunk is denied by a good stop by Andre Lunin. I'm going to make you skipper as NATO drops to the bench for our new number one. Andre Lunin, tough start, not saying a single penalty in the shootout, redeems himself there. Good stop. This has been a tough game. They're still leading by one as Bournemouth look for that leveler. What a block, man. He cash. And then, oh, dude, it's the bar. And Sinesi heads it. Backwards as Kirkis prevents the corner and we still hold on to a slender one goal lead. Excellent block by Cash, excellent save by Lunin in the first half. The new signings who may not have been great in the community shield have turned up on the opening day. And I often say this, this Dom should have made it too. I would take losing the charity shield, the, the super cup, the super copper, whatever country you're in. And three points the following weekend every day of the week. That is just how much more important the league is compared to the uh, the pre-season tournament, if you will, or mid-season, depending on, as Tyler fires wide, uh, what league you're managing in. And that is exactly what we get, a win in a South Coast derby on the opening day of the season. I think it's safe to say now we've surpassed Brighton Football Club as well. Two straight years of finishing above them, now being in Europe, they're outside of Europe. And I feel as though for this season, well, their team is just as good as ours, I'd say. We have to get in the win on the open day. I, I, I think we're now sort of level in terms of stature with Brian, if not slightly bigger of a club, and becoming a better team as well. We're starting to overtake our rivals now. That's always a great feeling in an RTG when you feel like you're starting to surpass your rivals now. So I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but uh, Joshua Park has just gone out on loan to Huddersfield, so we'll keep an eye on the, uh, the young goalkeeper there. Did I mention that before the game? Can't remember, but he's gone out on loan anyway. And as has Lee Wynn as well. Yep, the Wonder Kid Wynn is, uh, is out on loan. And he's chose FC20. Yeah, I negotiated this, but he's gone to FC20, the uh, the Arid V side, uh, for two years. We'll keep an eye on him there, and hopefully we'll be thrown in at a defender just 16 years old in the Dutch top tier. Now that would be awesome to see. Come back stronger in two years, Lee. I'm, I'm going to keep a close eye on his development. And just before our first away day, bid for Sinistera from Newcastle United. And they are a Champions League side. Once again, the Magpies finishing in the top four last year. Plus, Luis Sinistera isn't happy with his playtime or his contract either. So I did say, if we got a bid for him and he's still unhappy sitting on the bench, I'll let him go. And this one makes sense. Staying within England, but making a jump up from Europa League to the Champions League under Eddie Howe. Yeah, th th this makes sense to me, I would say. So I'm going to ask, he's still a good player though, 26 years old in the prime of his career. I'm going to ask Eddie Howe for 35 mils, 11 mil over the market valuation. That's fair, I would say, in today's market. But he says no. He says, I know Luis isn't happy. I know he wants to leave. So therefore, we should be able to get him a little bit cheaper. 32 mil? Okay, meet in the middle. 32 mil for Luis Sinistera, and I guess we'll take it. Right, next up, three and a half star Coventry City away at the Rico. Statistically, the weakest side in the division, with them having Jamal Lowe leading the line, I guess anything's possible. By the way, can I just say, in an era where everyone's modernizing their logos and making them more minimalistic, I've always loved Coventry City's badge, and I'm glad that they're keeping it with what seems to be 
the foreseeable future. Premier League football back in Coventry, but let's ruin their homecoming. Come on, you cherries. This is a very bizarre uh, kind of thing. But when I was a kid, um, I used to love sticker albums. And uh, I, <laughs> I know this is really nerdy. That I'm 32 this year. But every now and then when I'm, uh, you know, walking uh, through Tesco or whatever and, and you see the, the, the magazine rack and, and there's like the sticker album there. And there's like, oh, you know, free, free packs of stickers with the, the sticker album itself. And you can obviously buy the, the, the stickers at the counter as well. I'm like... Can I, can I, can I buy, can I buy this? Am I allowed to buy this at 31 years old? I don't know, it's Solanke. This is an early sitter there. I never do, I resist the temptation. I'm, a, I'm an old man now, all right? I've got, to, <laughs> I've got to resist the temptation. But anyway, the point I'm getting to is that uh, when I was a kid and Coventry were in uh, the Premier League, um, the, the badge was always a shiny. I don't know if it's still shiny nowadays in the modern day sticker. It was always a shiny. And I, I, I don't know why, but I, there was a season of Coventry in the top tier and I had their shiny badge, and it's one of those like core memories, like it's always in my mind, in the badge with the shiny background. Ah, oh, it looks so cool. Look really, really cool. And now I can't see Coventry's logo without seeing like the shiny background as well. It's <laughs> oh dear, it's so, I, I just love it, you know, in an era where everything's getting so minimalistic, I love Coventry's logo. I, I, I love teams and, and organizations that still have quite a lot going on in their, uh, in their, in their badge, in their logo, you know? Jamal, no, 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 I don't believe it. Showing no respect, so I ain't gonna sing his song. Jamal Lowe by his commentary in front. And it's a dream return to football, top flight football, I should say, at the Rico. I can't believe it. Of all the players to get the goals. Well, this is why they're in the Premier League. This is why they are back in the Premier League. Jamal Lowe firing them up. To the top tier. I wish I wish EA would add it in though. So when a player moves on to a new team now, because more often than not they do show respect. Not every player, but most do. And I wish they would add it in so they, they know, you know, if a player has scored against their former team, like in this case, for example, Jamal only moved on at the start of last season, they would uh, they would show the respect. Jamal Lowe showing none. Coventry with shock lead. Clark, lovely ball. Solanke gets around a covering defender and he's not gonna miss twice. He is not going to miss twice. Dom Solanke missed an early sitter. Ain't going to miss that one. Bournemouth back on level terms. Cunha down the right. Solanke waiting. Receives it. Oh, and clips it in off the post. And Dom continues his red hot start. This is why he's on, is it 70 grand a week now? I think we doubled his salary to 65 or 70 grand a week. And why I've given him the armband as well. Mr. Consistent Dom Solanke once again puts the ball in the back of the net and unsurprisingly it's Cunha with the assist. Kisses the post and possibly kisses goodnight to the Sky Blues. Come from behind to surely lead the Rico with three points. It was an injury as well for Scott during the game. It was an ankle injury, sprained ankle injury. So not, not a bruise, but a sprained ankle for Alex Scott. So that will rule him out. Uh, for, I believe, our Europa League group opener as, as well as the, uh, the next few games in the league as well. And we should see, there we go, the departure of Luis Sinistera. A couple of years here at the Cherries, but unfortunately, like I said, just like with Tav, it was so hard to get him in the team due to so many players in his position that are slightly better or if not favoured to him. And there we go. He calls Stein with his career in Dorset and he's off to the North East. Off to join the Champions League Newcastle United. So I, I, I quite like that. For the realism, I think that makes a lot of sense. And after that sale, our budget now rises to 65 mil, so lots of money to reinvest. When you look at the side right here, you can see we still got a major problem, and that is the lack of depth, which is very concerning now we're a European team. I would say we still need to sign a backup striker for Solanke, and I've got several names on the shortlist we could bring in here to do that role. Coming off the bench for Dom and starting in those midweek games when the skipper might need a rest. Um, and all these names on the shortlist here I think would be good fits, but... A couple I don't think would move here and be second fiddle. Adam Hlozek at Brentford and Belogan at Monaco. I don't think with their rating right now, with their ability and their age as well, both being under 25, they're coming to sit on the bench for Dominic Solanke. So that leaves us with four. Eddie Nketiah, Ricardo Pepe, DCL and Beto. Oh, and Zeki Amdouni as well. So five, sorry. Um, 
I've used Calvert Lewin and Nketiah loads and loads of times before, so I think with that being the case, I'll leave them where they are right now, and Eddie might be on his way to Mallorca on loan anyway. So that leaves me with Pepe, Beto, and Anduni. I'm not sure Pepe would settle for a bench role here either, with PSV being in the Champions League, and he also having some American friends at PSV right now, like Malik Tillman. So Beto or Anduni, never used either before. The Clarets are newly promoted, FA Cup finalists last year, and as for Beto, I'd probably say right now, he and DCL battling out for that starting striker role in Sean Dyche's system. I, I'm i leaning more towards Beto, to be honest, because again, I've, I've, I've never used either before. Um, both, I think, would be pretty decent as backups, but I've, ne- I've never used Beto before. I think mean, it's a good chance I'll probably use Amdouni at some point in this year's FC. But for Beto, I, I don't mind this. Everton only just finished above the bottom three last year, had a diabolical season. I uh, I don't mind it. So I'm going to go for Beto. He's had a really, really tough season under Sean Dyche this year with the Toffees. Um, so maybe a fresh start, a clean break, and he'd, uh, he'd do better elsewhere. I'd say probably looking at DCL and Beto right now with, with Sean Deitch, who would he prefer to go with? I guess it depends on who their opponent is. But after last year, only just finishing on the bottom three with a chance for him to come here and play European football, even as a backup to Dominic Solanke. I like this move for all parties. Everton getting a bit of money for a player who's not done too well and us getting a player that can be a reliable backup. It's a four-year, 50 grand a week deal as Beto swaps Goodison Park for the vitality and is now our new backup striker with Dominic Solanke. I really like his story as well. When he was playing in the amateur leagues of Portugal not that long ago, only about five, six years ago, uh, he was working at KFC alongside that as well. And uh, since he turned pro with Porto Manense, he just never looked back. Moved on to the Serie A, then to the Premier League whilst it never really worked out at the top of these. Hopefully it will here in Dorset. Welcome to the Vitality Stadium. Beto, yes, the 27-year-old is in. Uh, one goal in his first two games this season with the Toffees, but I'm glad to have him here now as our understudy for Solanke. He, he, he's not going to start that many games, but what I like about him is he's a different option. Six foot four with 92 strength and 94 jumping. So he should win a lot of aerial duels. And I say this a lot, but it's always handy to have a striker you've got on your bench you can bring on for a different option. If it's tall, if it's height, if it's pace, whatever it is, something different from what you normally have to try something different when you need a goal. And just before our following game against Beto's former team, Everton, we see that Ben McKenzie is becoming a left back now. And oh, wow, a plus nine overall growth. So clearly, that was the right decision there we've got one amazing Welsh right back and now we've got an amazing Scottish left back Ben McKenzie keep your eyes on him released by the Hibernian Academy and now here in uh, in Dorset Bournemouth have a bit of a connection with Hibernian is that because of ownership? I don't know. I know there's a few lone players there, like Mark Ondes. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, uh, uh, fun and game. Uh, third one today, it's Everton at home. As Beto might make his debut against his former club as we look for our third win in a row in the Premier League and nine points out of a possible nine. Let's go get it. Come on, you cherries. Neto to Cunha. Chance for an early start. Oh, what a flick. Oh, what a lovely, lovely team goal that is. Wrapped up by Jack Clark. Already a goal in the Community Shield. His first Premier League goal this season. And he's got an assist, I believe, as well. Okay, last season, I'll be honest, I, I, I didn't really get as many goal contributions as I wanted. This year, we need to pick that up. Sign that big extension. Jack Clark here to stay for the long term. Now it's time for him to take the next step. Get one in friend group. And keeps it in possession as well. Liking him. Whether I play him CM, CDM, RB. Like he, he does pretty well. I said when I signed him, his best asset is probably the versatility. And that's that's what I love about certain players, man. You know, they, they're not the best physically or technically, but they're just so versatile. And that's so handy to have a utility player. So when someone gets injured, like in the case of Alex Scott, he can fill in wherever. As NATO finds Solanke, who should have. Got his first of the day and yet another in the league. Still leading by one though. And at the moment, Everton completely pinned. That second goal is coming. Just got to keep attacking and we'll get it. It's not exactly been a classic of a game. But a win is a win. If we've got to grind out a 1-0 victory, then so be it. Three wins on the trot to start the season off. And it's safe to say that Charity Shield choke is looking like a distant memory. Bournemouth off to a flyer. So directly after the game, uh, deadline day is here. Uh, we see straight away a bid uh, for friend group, Genoa. Uh, didn't we sign? Was it? No, it wasn't Genoa we signed it from. No, no, of course, he moved on to SC20, didn't he, from 
Wait, was he at Genoa first? Yeah, she looks it up. He was at Genoa initially, uh, but then, of course, he went to a Twente in the game, and that's where he signed him from. So, you know, I want to take him back, but we're going to say no. He started CM in that game due to the Alex Scott injury, and, and like I said, he's so versatile, and that's why I really like him. It's always handy to have a player like this in your team. So, you know, if you do have an injury crisis, you need to move bits around. You can do just that. Frederick can fill in at CB, right back, CDM, possibly on the right-hand side, maybe even slightly further forward. He's the sort of player that I just love, man, because he's just so, so versatile. So, you know, I want to buy him back. We're going to say no. It's 43 million on the budget to work with on deadline day, but I don't know if we're going to do anything. We've got our new backup striker. I'm liking how the team is looking. We could possibly sign another right back. We could possibly sign another CM. Uh, but really, I, I like how the team was looking. I don't think we need to buy anyone, really. Yeah, I said this before as Frankfurt put in a bit for Dan Neal, but obviously going to turn this one down. Just a one year here, and I do like him as a uh, backup midfielder. Just because you've got money doesn't mean you have to spend it. You know, you can keep it, you can bank it, you can save it. It's going nowhere. It's going nowhere. And in career mode, it's the same. It carries over to the new season to add to your what would be original transfer budget. So just because you've got the money doesn't mean you need to spend it. Not just a lesson for career mode, but also for life as well. I've learned that very late and the hard way too. But trust me, better to learn it late than never. So five hours to go. Yeah, I think we're going to get through this, man, and do the Europa League group draw. I've got, I've got no plans to bring anyone in. Well, to be fair, um, I wouldn't mind bringing in a third-choice goalkeeper. Uh, just because NATO is out of contract on the end of the season and I might let him go on a free. And, and I wouldn't mind either of the two young English lads, really. Matthew Cox and, uh, and Michael Cooper. I would say young. Cooper's now 25 in the save. But, oh, where's, where's he going? Is that... Is he going... Is he going... Is that Rapid Vienna? It's hard to tell there. Yeah, just seen it. Um, Rapid Vienna have approached him. Well, Plymouth, um, obviously, being in Devon, uh, you know, the, the southwest of England, uh, not not too far from, from Dorset. And uh, he spent he spent his entire career there as well. So I kind of like the idea of him wanting to stay within South England, but go to a uh, bigger club, take a step up from the championship to the, uh, to the Premier League. Uh, he's got 81 kicking, which is perfect for us as well. I like him as an understudy as well. Uh, for Andre Lunin, especially knowing that NATO might be in his final season for the club too. I, I like free goalkeepers. It's always nice to have a, uh, a homegrown training nation one as well. And I think it's more realistic it'd, it'd move within England and go to rapid Vienna. Bizarre destination, so I'm going to prevent that happening and bring him here. Yeah, I don't necessarily see that, uh, that, that, that deal happening in real life. Michael Cooper to rapid Vienna. Yeah, a great place to play your football, but uh, instead he's staying in southern England. Born in Exeter, spending his entire career playing for Plymouth. It seems like this guy doesn't want to venture too far from home. And Michael, Dorset is a lot closer than Vienna. So welcome to Bournemouth Football Club on a five-year deal, Michael Cooper. Yeah, I really like this. You know, obviously we, we need a long-term success for NATO. We've got one in Andre Lunin, but also someone who can sit on the bench for him as well when eventually he just can't do anything anymore. I always feel like when goalkeepers get below 70, they become kind of useless for top-level football. So would that be in the case of NATO going down rapidly? This makes sense. 11 years younger, just as good right now. And by the end of the season, he'll probably be two or three racings higher as well. I love the 81 kicking as well. I'll keep him on balance for now. This is a solid backup for Andre Lunum. So with our budget down to under 40 mil and the final hour of deadline day now upon us, we'll leave the transfers for now. Please, for that to be fair, new strike coming in in Beto. And a new backup goalkeeper as well. As the top deals were Chua Meni, uh, leaving Real Madrid to join Napoli for 88.4 mil. Goncalo and Nafio has finally left Sporting and gone to play under Simeone 49.1 mil. And Nicholas Jackson has left Chelsea to join Stad Rene 46.6 mil. He always scores against me, so I'm glad that he won't get the chance to now. Unless we meet Stad Rene in Europe, you never know. So that's it. Uh, deadline day over. And if we do a few advances in the calendar... We're going to see the draw for the Europa League group stage. Here we go. For the first time ever, Bournemouth going in to Europe. And in the group stage, we've been drawn against. There we are. Group A, straight out of the hat. Nice, KRC, Genk and Apoel. That's not an easy group whatsoever, that. It's a group we should be able to get through. It's a group I'll target top spot in as well. 
but Nice to French side, KRC Genk, and the Cypriots Apoel, who I swear are just always in the Champions League group stage at some point. Even so, t tough group, but one we should be able to get through. And just real briefly, a uh, quick look at the academy as well, uh, where we can see right now the uh, the best talents in here. I might, Whitaker, if that potential keeps dropping, I might release him. I know the overall's really good, but like I said, when, when, when you've played just like two or three years, you've already got so many good academy graduates, you can afford to let go of one who may not be quite as good. But the best two, I'd say, Frank Ross, the young American striker. And obviously Ben McKenzie. What what is it with the fullbacks here at Bournemouth, man? We're generating fullbacks like a club with a reputation for generating fullbacks. I mean, he and Win, we we got fullback locked up in Dorset for many years. Right, let's play a couple more games. We'll save the Europa League group opener for the next one. Uh, following game, Liverpool away at Anfield, aiming to keep our winning start going and make it four wins on the trot to begin the Premier League campaign off. Come on, you charis. Easy, easy, easy. Oh, Diaz turned at a crucial moment. Plays it back and Lunin gets down low to his left. Poor first half, really. First chance of the half so far. And that's a good save by Andre Lunin. And that's a good block by Zabani. Looking for our third clean sheet in four. And this would be a credible point away at Anfield as well. Might drop to Clanger in the charity shield. We've bounced back in a really good way. So it's cross. Ah, oh, headed in by Cody Gakpo. And Liverpool leave it late to possibly win it. 12 on the clock and that'll probably do it. What an inch-perfect delivery from Mo Salah. And headed in past Luna. That's such a shame. Defended brilliantly all game long. And look as though we're going to lose the point right towards the end. That, that's frustrating, that. Final chance. And to be fair, it won't drop to Billing. We space to shoot. Alisson with the save. And Bournemouth almost nicking a point right at the end. I can never... I, I wish there was... A, there used to be a button. Like, you press R1, you can bring your keeper forward. You can't do that anymore. It's so frustrating. You know, they come forward and they don't. In this case, they don't. NATO is going to float one in. And ahead of my Vinny is saved by Allison. Behind for another corner. The referee's not going to let us take it. And I'm in the fourth visuals here right now saying, you know if the shoe was on the, on the other foot. You'd let that set piece be taken. In the end, referee calls time. Well within his rights, to be fair. Liverpool hold on to claim the three points. Yes, yeah, do one more game today. Last year's EFL Cup winners Chelsea in Dorset is going to bounce back here against Mauricio Pochettino's side 100% to start the season off. Come with you, Jerry's. Tyler to Solanke. And Solanke trying to blast it in near post only for Diego Costa to get something on that. It's always so hard to beat a keeper from that sort of angle. But at times, it's just... Like, if, even if your success ratio is, is quite low from the shot, I mean, it might take a deflection, it might take a nick, it might rebound to a player in the centre. It's it's worth doing just to uh, possibly get a half chance of getting a goal, if you will. Still no, no, excellent start this though from Borff, putting Chelsea under pressure early. And, oh, Solanke heads just over. Still no, no, but that first goal is coming. Oh, that's a great touch by Pedro Neto, that. Cross it bad either. What a goal! What a goal! And Alex Scott back in the team after his four week layoff marks it with a goal. And now he is really starting to turn it on, man. Seriously. Playing him as DLP, just like we did in my Bournemouth Football Manager save. But. He's still showing he's got all the talent as well. Takes the touch, gets it out of his feet. Maybe Diogo Costa could have done better, but it's Alex Scott with another... Uh, no, first of the season, sorry. I was thinking of Jack Clark. Sorry, first in three games. And the ex-Bristol City boy gives us the early lead. Point still stands. Heck of a young player. Heck of a young player. Showcase started Ashton Gate, and uh, now he's doing it at a vitality. And after signing out a big extension... Seeing him as a, a valuable asset for the long term. He's showing us exactly why he's worth all that money. Cash to Solanke. Golden chance here. Dom has men in the middle. Little bit lucky we'll take it. And NATO! With a beauty! Puts Bournemouth. Tune it up. Wonderful technique. Wonderful, wonderful finish. And we lead by two inside the first half an hour. Solan keeps the chance alive, nods it in, and Pedro Nato, look at a body contour there to spin around and whip it in with that left foot acrobatically. That's a brilliant goal there. 
Just the season with Pedro Neto as well. He's having a ball down that right hand side, man. Absolutely dominating. And I know last season I was a bit critical of him, but I shouldn't have been. He was way better than I made him out to be. But for Nkunku, it's another one. And Chelsea are going to prevent us getting back to clean sheet ways, if you will. 2-1. And after, to be fair, a few games where there wasn't much going on, this game has been sublime. This first star, three goals. And there's plenty more to come, I'm sure. I'll defend this free kick before the break. As Nkunku floats one in. Vinny heads away. And now I think it's probably... Gonna do it for the half. Or is it? Oh, goalkeepers are so broken in this year's FC. But Pedro Neto, we've wound him up and now he's got started. A brace for the Portuguese winger as he beats his compadre for the second time. Running clear one on one. No one's gonna catch him there. He's so quick as we know. And it's a bit of a skill shot past his Portuguese teammate. For the national team. Bournemouth restored a two goal cushion. It's 3 1. I always feel slightly cheap about scoring those sort of goals because it's like when you've got a pacey player and you get him in behind, it's like, okay, I'm 1 1 now, I'm going to get caught. Um, and with the keepers being frozen, it's like all you've got to do is do a tiny little skill move or sometimes just dribble as Jack Clark makes it 4. And they're not going to be able to adjust their feet because they're just stuck on the spot. But the thing I always remind myself of is this. The AI will do it to you every single time when your goalkeeper's frozen. So why not do it when the shoe's on the other foot? Even so, Jack Clark, what a start to the season. Two goals already in the league. Scored in the community shield as well. And he's got an assist as well. He's absolutely flying out there. And this is our best performance of the season thus far. The perfect way to bounce back and a massive win over Chelsea with a statement made in Dorset. Last year we won the FA Cup and qualified for the Europa League. Well, this year, why can't we win another major honour and be a dark horse for a Champions League place as well? We know Bournemouth are ambitious off the pitch. Let's stay ambitious on the pitch as well. But that'll do it for today's episode of the Realistic Career, guys. So big thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have enjoyed this episode, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for next season. We'll play our first EFL Cup game of the season. More big games in the Premier League and our Europa League debut. First of a European game for Bournemouth owned to Nice. Aiming for a winning start as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you for next episode very soon.